as composable language extensions. Uh, so I'll start with just some introduction of, of what type qualifiers are, why they're useful, and what we do that's new. Uh, so very uh, roughly, a type qualifier is an annotation on a type that uh, specifies it should be treated specially in some way. So const is a type qualifier, and we all know how that works. It specifies that updates should not be allowed to a variable, and if we write a program uh, that tries to update it, we'd like to raise an error. Uh, previous work by Jeffrey Foster uh, presented a, a theory in which uh, languages can be extended by the user uh, with new, new qualifiers. Uh, so for example, you can think of annotating a uh, string that comes from a user who might be malicious as tainted, and we have to raise an error if that string somehow reaches a function that can be exploited if given a carefully constructed input. Uh, similarly, we can use uh, type qualifiers to uh, uh, represent pointers that we know are not null and use this to prevent uh, null dereferences. Beyond just uh, uh, simple keywords, uh, we can look at uh, qualifiers that are more syntactically expressive, for example, doing dimensional analysis. Uh, if we try to add uh, meters to seconds, for example, we'd like to raise an error. And what's uh, also interesting is if we consider types that are not quite compatible, like if we tried to add meters to millimeters rather than uh, raising in a uh, static error, we might want to uh, uh, correct that and generate some code that, that just does the scaling and does it correctly. So the primary focus of our work is framing these qualifiers as independently developed composable language extensions. Our vision is that New language constructs can be imported uh, from ex language extensions by a user uh, as easily as new functions can be imported from libraries. As a result of the tools that we use, we also find that it's relatively easy uh, to do some other useful things with type qualifiers. Uh, for example, uh, the syntactically rich uh, units uh, qualifier with the, the sub uh, grammar here of uh, uh, unit, base unit expressions uh, is, fits in relatively uh, very well into our, our tools, and we're also able to generate code as we saw in the unit qualifier. Uh, so some additional background on how and why these uh, examples that I briefly showed in the previous slide raise errors, uh, qualifiers introduce a subtyping relation. So if we uh, qualify a variable as const, it's a super type of unqualified uh, of the same type. So anywhere we're expecting const, we can pass in something that's not qualified as such, but not vice versa. So here, for example, string copy is expecting an unqualified character. So if we pass uh, character string, and if we pass it uh, a string that's qualified as const, we get an error because it's not a subtype. Tainted works, works uh, similarly. On the other hand, non-null introduces subtyping in the other direction. Uh, a type that's annotated as non-null is a subtype as an unqualified type. In addition to this subtyping, On const, we'd like to raise an error if on any non-initializing assignment. On null, we'd like to raise an error on any dereference of a variable whose type is not qualified as null. So there's a subtyping and also some uh, qualifier specific semantics that we'd like to add. So our work makes a clear distinction between the, the different users, the developers of each extension and the, the final end user. So the developer of a, the tainted extension might be a security expert who is not necessarily the same developer as a non-null extension. And uh, the final programmer that uses these extensions uh, simply would want to import uh, these 
uh, both of these extensions uh, with some guarantee that they won't conflict even though they were developed independently. So first, let's start at the point of view of the uh, end programmer. Uh, so suppose we're writing, uh, here's a simple example where we just uh, read a string from the file, uh, read a line and print it out. But it's written a little uh, carelessly. So for example, if uh, the file doesn't exist, we're not checking if fopen returns null. And so uh, we'll crack the program will crash in that case. Non-null qualifier uh, can detect that case statically. So uh, from the port programmer's point of view, if we're using uh, the, the extensible C compiler we're using is called able C. The programmer would s specify uh, that non-null uh, would be imported. And somehow the, which I'll get to in the next slide, the uh, library uh, headers will need to be annotated uh, so, for example, here we're specifying that the file pointer should be non-null, and the programmer then, to avoid those uh, static errors, will need to add annotations to the program. And so this is all, all standard on uh, how type qualifiers previously worked, as shown on the previous slide, uh, with the exception that the cast to non-null of fopen, here we're able to generate uh, code at runtime uh, to check that the result is actually not null. Uh, there's a similar problem uh, with, uh, that can be solved with tainted. So there's a, a uh, print format vulnerability here. Um, uh, the, the secure, the non-exploitable way that to uh, write this code should be uh, that second comment line down there. And we can detect this, that this is there statically by additionally annotating the, the same fgets function with tainted. So the developer of the tainted extension uh, somehow needs to annotate uh, library headers. Uh, this is uh, done in, in previous work and it was pretty simple to do. We just allow uh, extension uh, developers of the qualifiers to add additional annotations. But if another extension wants to annotate the uh, same function, uh, they somehow need to be merged. And so the end user would import the, or include the uh, two files created by the uh, uh, extension writers and what they should see what we would like them to see is the uh, prototype at the bottom there. And so we've updated ABLE-C to uh, work in this way so that uh, these annotations can be po composed by different uh, extensions. So I mentioned that we use uh, ABLE-C, our uh, extensible uh, C compiler front end. Here, language extensions are developed independently. Uh, the programmer here simply specifies that uh, we'd like to import the non-null and the tainted extensions into the able C host language. Silver, our attribute, uh, extensible attribute grammar system, uh, constructs a uh, custom compiler, which then can parse uh, extended C code uh, written by the user uh, after passing through a C pro preprocessor and do uh, the type checking that we've seen. Uh, this then generates a, a pure C code, uh, which is passed to a standard C compiler. So for example, on, on the example that we saw, the code that the programmer wrote is on the left with the uh, new qualifiers uh, colored. The code that gets generated on the right, uh, the pure C code, we see that all of the qualifiers have simply been removed. Uh, the only new code is the uh, generation of this runtime check that was added by uh, the cast. So that's the, the point of view from the uh, end programmer. 
uh, what do the extension writers see? Uh, so they need to specify uh, uh, contract, uh, concrete syntax using uh, uh, context-free grammars, and the abstract syntax and static semantics use uh, attribute grammars. And provided that certain restrictions are met in these extensions, uh, we have automatic analyses that guarantee that these independent extensions will compose. And for, so for simple, the simple keyword qualifiers together with uh, only introducing subtyping, this is fairly simple. The concrete syntax, we simply say the host language uh, type qualifier can uh, derive a new non-null terminal, and the abstract syntax tree is uh, built with this new production, which has equations for a pretty printing attribute and uh, is positive or is negative, which specifies the uh, direction of the, the subtyping. And we split this out into two uh, attributes uh, for qualifiers that might not want to introduce uh, a subtyping relationship. So that's how an extension writer specifies new qualifiers with uh, subtyping semantics. How do we specify more complex semantics? For example, that an unqualified pointer dereference uh, should be an error. The non-null extension would like to do this. Uh, so in the host language, there's a uh, production uh, representing a, a dereference, uh, where a dereference expression has a single child uh, here named D, that is the expression to be dereference, and on expression non-terminals, there are attributes, a, a type attribute representing its type, errors attribute, that's a list of messages, and the errors are computed based on the type. So here, if we try to dereference uh, something that's not a pointer, we raise an error uh, purely in the host language. The extension writer uh, then creates an aspect production uh, that adds new equations to uh, this host production. And so here, we're adding more uh, messages to the errors attribute. Uh, we, we again are able to uh, inspect the type of the expression being dereferenced, and if it's not qualified, uh, we raise an error. So far, we've only looked at the composition, the uh, composition of qualifier extensions. Uh, this framework more generally supports uh, more general extensions. So here we see C extended with algebraic data type uh, constructs. So uh, we can build uh, expressions with addition, multiplication, and compute their value using pattern matching. Uh, the types of these nodes are regular C types with pointers. We might want to use the non-null extension to uh, guarantee that uh, no trees are built with uh, null nodes. Uh, a problem that we run into here, though, is that extensions, the, the ADT extension here in this case, will generate its own code, which may include pointers, which will be dereferenced, but it has, since it's done independently, it has no way of knowing that those pointers should be qualified as non-null, and so the non-null extension will raise errors on any dereference of those. So it's safe, but it doesn't end up being very useful. We can improve on that. So here, for example, is a pointer to uh, the expression node uh, that is qualified on node, but the outermost pointer is not. Rather than checking this statically, we could uh, add a generate a runtime check. Uh, to do this, uh, we modify the ABLE C host language to add a new attribute on expression called dynamic checks. And we again, in the aspect production in the extension, 
add a new check if the type is not qualified as null. And that check is just a function uh, that takes the variable to be compared and returns how to uh, check it. Here, temp equals null in this case. Able C supports extensions that create new types and overload operators based on that type. So here we have an interval, a new interval type uh, that supports uh, overloaded addition. Uh, it makes sense to qualify interval types with uh, new extension qualifiers, for example, meters. And if I uh, multiply two intervals uh, to uh, collect, to infer uh, that the result should be meters squared, we can do that and that works fine. Uh, some issues that do not, uh, that might, might come up in this case is for example, Suppose we have a, an extension that creates a new list type and overloads multiplication. So we can take a list and multiply it by a uh, numeric value. And what should we do if numeric value is qualified with, say, meters? Well, if multiplication is overloaded as uh, mapping over the list, that seems fine that the result should be uh, meters qualified list. But this is all syntax directed, so the extensions are free to overload the star operator however they like, so what if uh, they instead overloaded it to mean cons? Then this, this wouldn't quite make sense. There are features of uh, previous work that we uh, just haven't implemented. Uh, so for example, flow sensitivity, uh, annotating these uh, programs with all these new qualifiers, uh, is uh, a lot of work for program writers. We would like, it would be much more convenient if uh, we could infer the, where at each program point we can infer more qualifiers. Uh, so there are ways to do that, we just haven't. And similarly with a qualifier polymorphism, if we have an say ID function that takes a parameter of some type and returns itself, uh, we would like to return uh, that to work with any qualifier. And so. Able C supports some contract structs as, as extensions uh, similar to C++, for example, templates, and we can do what's on that first line there, uh, but we're not able to ex uh, abstract at the, the qualifier level in that second example. So I've, I've shown how Able C in this case is, is used to uh, support type qualifiers as uh, uh, composable language extensions. Uh, there will be more talks uh, from our group later in the week, specific, uh, talks specifically on uh, uh, Able C uh, on Friday morning at Oopla. So if you're interested in hearing more about those topics, I'd suggest you go.